Hello everybody, soy Alejandro del Fuego and welcome back to Terraria Modded. So today I just figured it's going to be an exploration episode. I'm hoping to find one of those large living wood trees, you know, the big giant ones, so I can find a um, living loom because I want to make a slime statue, an, an item you normally can't get through crafting in the game, and is a really rare drop from slimes. Oh yeah, I also plan to make acorns in the desert last time. Not sure if I left that in the recording or not, because I haven't actually ed edited the episode yet as of this point. Apparently if you plant an acorn in the desert, it turns to a palm tree, which is uh, weird. The tree type... Okay, the jungle's on this side, which means the dungeon must be on the other side. I think that's how it works, right? varies by depending on what type of um, soil you put it in. So if you put it in snow or ice, it becomes a um, boreal wood tree. If you put it in sand, it be... Did I just get a robot hat? Cool. We'll wear that later. Why are there so many um, corrupt, um, crimson statues, this crimson um, altars down here in the middle of the jungle? Ooh, a house. Oh, this house is infested. Let's see what's in here. <gasps> Magic mirror! Look at that. Lovely. Now we don't have to worry about stocking up on recall potions. Also, look at that piranha statue. Okay, I'm gonna die. Yep, I died. I lost seven gold? Where'd I get that much gold? Oh yeah, I forgot to, um... I forgot to put away my money as of last time. No, don't want to talk to you, I just want the piggy bank. Anyway, let's continue on that way, because even though it's night, why not? So yeah, I want to get... I'm still struggling to find the focus of this series. I want it to be very based on stuff and activities you can only do and find in the mod. But, be that as it may, we still have to do a lot of basic Terraria stuff, such as deal with, you know, night mobs. Deal with night mobs, night mobs. Level up, find um, heart crystals, and collect fallen stars to get re um, to increase our mana and all that good stuff. Because without that we won't be able to experience all of the mod. Because some of these enemies are stronger than we can handle. Okay, we're back at the jungle. I'm gonna go under to get my coins and then cut back to the surface so we can continue going one way. Okay, new plan. I obviously cannot handle myself at night yet, so I'm just gonna go underground and collect some vine rope on the way down. Because vine rope is something uh, valuable that I can take advantage of. As we saw last episode, it can be turned into armor, thanks to the mod. I hate it when that happens, that I cannot find my way out of the darkness. But we found more cave, for now. Don't know where this is going to lead us, because again, I cannot see around that well. Alright, let's see what's around here. This looks promising, kind of. 
less promising. It's all underwater. Topaz. There we go. <gasps> heart crystal. Nice. First heart crystal of the series. Whoops. The heck is that? Supposed to be a trap or something? Oh, uh, it's just underground decoration or whatever. But let's keep exploring, because who knows what we'll find down here. Hopefully, some cool stuff. Hopefully, I won't fall down somewhere fall hard and die. I kind of find it weird how, like, some caves are shaped perfectly enough to let you in, but not out. It's, it's kind of weird the way they're shaped like that, you know? Now let's head back to the surface. This has got to be day by now. Good, it's daytime. We've got a few statues we can turn into money. This is, uh... Piranha statue, good, good. Let's throw that in here. We can throw these and... I have hooks. I have a hook. I can make a, a hook shot. Uh, a whatchamacallit up. Oh, whatever. The thing you can grapple onto. Grapple. That's it. But what I need is more lead lead, tin ore, where are my lead bars, tin, silver, platinum, invar, lead, because I think I need one more chain, oh no, never mind, I just need three chains for a grapple, I got a nurse, nice, Nice nurse, I got a nurse. The lead bar in there. Robot hat, chains. That is fine and dandy. Let me just check one thing real quickly. Is the nurse living in our house or did she like move into an underground house? Oh, she's moving in there, nice. Anyway, let's continue on, because now it's daytime, we can handle ourselves. Oh, the painter arrived too, and we're back in the jungle. Instead of going down when we get to that huge, ridiculous mound, let's try going up. That'll probably bode better for us. Oh, a chest, nice. Oh, I got Aglet, even nicer. Heh, I love this ridiculous world generation. Let me tell you, whoever programmed the, um, world generation sequences of this, um, of this game, you may have messed up on the world I play in my other series, but it's still pretty fun. So pretty interesting having the temple float almost as high as, uh, clouds. I mean, not the temple, the... the dungeon. Floating on a level almost as high as floating islands. So, just a big shout out to all the um, mods over working at Relogic. Watching some of Ped, um, Pedwin's videos and streams, I know some of you by name, but I don't know all of you. And I don't know your specific roles at Relogic. Only that you're awesome for making this game and all that stuff. Is this some mysterious plant? No. Keep my eye out for those so I can get the die trader in here. Because again, this series is going to be focusing on the modded stuff, but we also have to get through the non-modded parts of the game. So that way we can enjoy the whole whole um, experience to its fullest. Freaking blue slime, get back here. Accept your fate at the hands of my sword. Another heart crystal. 
jungle seems to be our lucky place for heart crystals. Well, actually, we found the first one underground near our house. But still. I mean, who am I? I'm just a small-time YouTuber. Um, plus 1% movement speed. Let's equip it. I'm just a small-time Terraria YouTuber. And I don't even go exclusively for Terraria like, um, Pedwin does. Look at me, I'm comparing myself to larger YouTubers. Who am I? I'm just nobody. Don't expect anyone important to know about me. Especially game developers. Who are hard at work making this game as perfect as it can, fixing any bugs. Doing all the good stuff. But, if anyone on the Relogic team happens to see this video like 10 years in the future, by complete random chance, then, uh, thank you so much for making this game. It's awesome. And I love the world generation algorithms, because they make for some interesting exploration. Oh, found some crimson. Some flooded crimson, too, at that. Okay, crimson is a lot scarier than corruption. Because corruption is like purplish blue, this one's red. And while in the corruption you have um, just red hole, I mean, holes in the ground leading to nowhere, these actually look like mouths. Holy... Probably shouldn't even be this far. Probably shouldn't even be in the Crimson Zone yet. Anyway, in the Corruption, you have, like, blue holes leading blue abysses everywhere. In the Crimson, you have, like, mouths with teeth trying to swallow you into the earth. Which is a bit more intimidating than holes to nowhere. Okay, get away from the crimson. Go on to the desert. Desert. Oh boy, desert. And then more crimson. But there's the chest here. Hopefully I can survive long enough to open it. Another one is sparking. Grenades, lead. Good stuff, good stuff. I don't think it's playing the right music here. Just playing regular overworld music when it should be playing either desert or corruption mu crimson music. There we go. I mean, look at that. That freaking nasty jaw trying to swallow me up into the earth, which I just fell into. That's scary as all hell. But let's, let's keep going. This is taking longer to get from the center spawn to the end of the world in this world versus my other world. Ignoring all speed boosts that I have as my other character. Because, again, this is a large world, whereas the other world I made was a small world. Keep going, keep going. I'll escape one day. Okay, regular overworld music. Living wood tree. Perfect. Holy crap, what is that? Whatever it is, I'm gonna have to fight it now. Unless it gets stuck. Oh, it's just a viking. Anyway, let's see if there's a housing unit down here. No? You gonna do me like that, tree? Spend all this time looking for you and find out whether I have nothing? Is that how it is? I guess that's how it is. Hey. Hopefully there's another one of those big old trees around here. No, don't leave me stuck here. I still have a ways to go. I want to go further into the night. Oh, I found the edge of the world. Oh, well, this is, um, good, I guess, but... I mean, I was still hoping for another living wood tree. Might as well chop down these trees over here, and then head home. We got the painter here. Actually, let me just... Ah, oh, I was gonna check... 
if these housings were valid. Housing is suitable, 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 and suitable. Nice. Now let's head over this way. Because this way is where the, um... Frozen area is, and I love the frozen area. Because that's where we get our wolf pelts and stuff. These shuriken should help out a lot when dealing with the... When dealing with the wolfies and such. I mean, they don't have knockback, which is kind of a downside, but... You can deal damage to them faster, then. I should have probably not left my spear at home. Night Eskimos and all that. Why can't I pick up this tooth? Am I full on stuff? Screw the snow blocks. Okay, that was actually faster. Heal up. I don't want to lose that wolf pelt. What can I drop? What can I drop? What can I drop? I can drop, um... The stone blocks. Head home, empty my inventory, then head out again. I'll meet you guys back over there. But first, I'm gonna make uh, three mana crystals. Because I really like the tomes now that I have a more magic. Alright, here we are, back in the ice biome. Or the snow biome, I'm not sure if it's snow or ice biome. Because it has both. Alright, more, um, overworlds. More normal overworld area. And some desert, and a wolfie attacking me in the overworld desert area. Probably because it was still doing, um... Winter mob generation still at that moment. I don't know what I'm saying. I'm not a programmer. I am taking a computer programming class, but that's besides the point. This means this means the computer had a field day with my world regeneration, world generation. It was like, let's make this world as fun looking as possible, and then I went ten times overboard. Because why not? I'm still really glad that my world is crimson, so that way I can experience both corruption and crimson in a Let's Play series for you guys. I think corruption came first and crimson came in a later update of the game. I'm gonna need more chests, so I'm gonna take this chest. Because I'm running out of space. Chest space. Oh look, it's the, uh, whatchamacallit, the dungeon. Now remember this from my, from the other world, guys? We're not supposed to enter the dungeon too far. Lest we get killed by the dungeon guardian. But what we can do is take the things that are on the surface and hope for... Hope for the best. Okay, let's not go too far in there, because, again, we don't want to get killed by the Dungeon Guardian. And we are definitely not strong enough to take on the Skeletron right now. In fact, that old man, who turns into Skeletron when we ask him to, will prevent us from fighting Skeletron. Until we have a certain amount of HP. I forget what it is. It's like 300. Oh boy. We're gonna die. Another tree. Let's not die. Let's go down. Here it is. 
please let it be here. Please let it be here. Yes, a living loom. And we also got a living wood wand and a leaf wand. Perfect, perfect, nice, nice, nicety, nice with a side of rice. I really gotta stop saying that. Because I'm not a rapper. Even if I was, I'd be like the worst rapper out there. I mean, just listen to what I just said. Nicety, nice with a side of rice? What the hell is that? I'm just remembering a funny story from my childhood. So, like, when I was a kid, we were going out around and sharing interesting facts about ourselves, like, in a group with the rest of the class, I think it was. And, like, this one kid, who's very Asian-looking, this is part of the story, I'm not being racist, although what I say next does sound racist, his fun fact was that he doesn't like rice. And I was like, oh my god, you don't like rice? And everyone accused me of being racist, but, like... Half the meals my mom cooks includes rice, so I love rice. It's prepa she prepares them like several different ways with like different kinds of beans, different kinds of meats and seasonings. And I'm just like, how can you not like rice? It's so fun, so cool. <laughs> I can just, I did not do, um, we later became friends and I like, he understands why I said that now. Especially after, um, several of like, the things we did when my mom would um, cook some various dishes that involved rice and bring them to bring them to like field day and potlucks and stuff that we had for like the play or whatever. Anyway, I'm going off on a tangent on how I almost was ra how I kind of sounded racist one time but wasn't. But I don't know what I'm saying. I'm not even sure if I'm gonna put this part into the video. Now that I'm in college, rice is a pretty cheap thing. Rice is a pretty um, cheap thing. You can get, you can, I can go down to um, Stop and Shop and get like uh, ten or twenty pounds for pretty cheap. And now half of my dishes involve rice, and I'm learning different things I can do with them. Like just the other day, I made these rice and beans that were really, really good. Made it with a side of um, cube steak, fried it with onions. I went a little bit. I kind of splurged on myself a little bit. <gasps> You're a goblin, dude. I'm gonna kill you. I hate your kinds. Just that was a little bit. Uh, now that was racist sounding. But I really don't like goblins, they just invade way too often in my other worlds. Another living wood tree! Oh. wonder what else can be down here. Oh, I just saw the entrance to a living wood house. I love how there's just two layers of doors. No, I don't have enough inventory space for these. Let's see, what can I afford to get rid of? The dirt. And... The two snow blocks. I'm not gonna miss those. Let's loot these. And head back. So I can make a slime staff. I'll put the living loom over here. And what can I make? I can make living wood armor. Don't really need that. Um, here it is, slime staff. Yay! Now I have a slime staff. Where can I put this? I don't really use the boomerang all that often, so boomerang, you go away. Slime staff, you're in. Once I get the wolfy armor, that'll be nice and good. Nice, fine, and dandy. Can I place the chest on a table? No? I feel like this is a thing I should be able to do. Because I'm running out of space. There we go. Let's, let's uh, check you out again. You've got a crossbow selling for one gold. 
I should probably get a crossbow. I mean, I have 350 arrows I could be using. I should probably just buy a crossbow and use it. Because now I have a little baby slime following me. Aw, oh, how cute. Wait, let me check how much, uh... How many wolf pelts I have. Where'd I put those? Wolf pelts are... I got 15 of these. Plus 5 claws. Plus 6% increase minion damage. 4, 3... Let's see, 10. Then I need 8 for the helmet. Then I need 10 for the boots. Three, four, two. That does more than my um. Okay, so let me do the math. Sixteen for the jerkin. Sixteen for the jerkin. So that's sixteen. Twenty-six. Twenty-seven. Twenty-eight. I need thirty-four wolf pelts. Oh boy. I think that's gonna be the task for next episode. Let's see, I've been recording for about, um, 55 minutes, so, should I call that an episode? First, I'm going to check something. Where do I need to be to be able to make stone armor? Probably next to the anvil. Yep, anvil. I'll make stone armor and show that off. Now you're probably asking yourself, stone armor, that's really inefficient. Aren't you going to be weighed down by all that rock? And let me answer this, and uh, let me answer that question for you. Set bonus increased maximum defense by 2. 3 defense, 4% increased melee damage, 4% increased... I thought the stone armor weighed me down. I thought that was a feature of it. Oh yeah, it is. Look at how slow I'm going. I mean, look at how fast, how slow I'm going. Look at that. Versus when I'm wearing the vine armor. Look at that. You can see I'm going... Is that a freaking gold bunny? Holy crap. I've got two gold animals now. Look at that, it's a gold scroll from last episode. Now I got a gold bunny. Anyway, the thing I wanted to do is I had some glass in here, yup. I think with the glass I can make a terrarium and be able to house my um, golden animals. If I have enough glass, that is. Glass chest. Glass bottle. Wine glass, um, glass store, glass table. All this glass stuff, but I can't make a terrarium. Oh well. In between episodes, I'll get some sand from the desert. But for now, um, thank you so much for watching. If you like this episode, leave a like, comment, and subscribe, or don't do whatever the hell you want. I really hope you guys are enjoying this mod because. I'm enjoying it, finding out some cool and interesting stuff about it. Some cool and interesting stuff. I mean, look at this. I'm wearing a doge mask. I'm wearing a doge mask with a slime summon following me. And I can attack stuff using a razor leaf. And burning tomes. Oh no, I killed a bunny. I can kill stuff using these tomes, which aren't even available in the regular game. I got a slime staff that I made out of just wood and slime in the game using a living loom. And I'm going to kill more wolves in the snow biome to get um, summoner's armor early in game. Which is, might I add, not possible in the regular game. Anyway, in between episodes, I'm going just to get some... I'm not going to do much, I'm just going to go get some sand, make some more glass, and make some terrariums to have my golden animals, and put them around the house. But anyway, as always, gracias, and have a good day.